Hi folks, it's Jay. We are visiting a garden hidden in downtown Buffalo, on a street with some very old houses. It's like a dream that you would wander into by chance, where the fragrance of the flowers is surreal, and all sorts of bizarre things and mystical creatures would pop out at every turn. I approached the gardeners Alan and Mitch, and asked if we can take a look. What I saw surpassed even the wildest of dreams. This garden is featured on Garden Walk Buffalo, as well as Open Gardens. So we're with Mitch and Alan here. Can you say a quick hi? Hi. hi out there. Yeah. Welcome to our garden. Yeah. Can we join you on a walk in your garden? We'd love it. Come yeah. on. So I'll follow you. In the front yard, you have this very unique fountain. So tell me a little bit about this piece. Well, we installed that in 2005, and the, there was a name on it uh, that you can't read now, but it was Fred, okay. which we thought was a good name for a fountain. Oh, Just yeah. Oh. Nice and simple. <laughs> yeah. So this is Fred. And Fred's so that is a real bowling ball. That's a real bowling ball. So you made it into a component in the fountain. Yeah, it, it took some drilling and some plumbing and some uh, tubing, but uh, it's been flowing freely since <laughs> 2005. Wow, it's yeah. almost 20 years. Yeah. yeah, right. Tell me a little bit about this piece of art. So, so this is Rusty. Rusty. His name is Rusty, uh -huh. and he's made up of uh, auto components, oh, yeah. uh -huh. and uh, we bought it at the Gothic City, I believe, and, you know, he's here guarding the uh, garden, and we've had uh -huh. several times dogs uh -huh. that look just like him, with uh -huh. the white and the black pictures of Rusty and the dog oh, standing yeah. next to each other. It's lovely. One other thing about the fountain uh -huh. is that our neighbors, our neighbors and their dogs and our neighbors really look forward to when the fountain goes on because that's like oh spring's here oh, summer's yeah. it's, here it's a garden season and yeah. then they're sad when it closes <laughs> you probably can tell there will be two seams in Alan and Mitch's garden one seam is is the bowling ball the other is all kinds of little creatures you'll be seeing throughout the garden so now we are walking towards the backyard This actually becomes a vegetable These garden. are where our vegetables are, uh -huh. uh, because we really, between the clay soil, uh -huh. we had a black walnut tree in the back uh -huh. and the, the uh, maple tree. So we've got our eggplants oh, here, you can see, really and our tomatoes. We have four different kinds of tomatoes. Uh -huh. They're all little cherry, and we have a lot of basil. We make yeah. pesto. So uh, one note I want to share with the viewers, there is a benefit by placing vegetable on your driveway because the concrete, uh, they provide kind of a buffer. It, it radiate heat mm -hmm. even during the night, so the temperature is more even, mm -hmm. so the vegetable will grow better. So this would be an extra benefit if you... Well, uh, you can see, mm -hmm. you can see the tomatoes. There's oh, a few lovely. little red. And you have the nasturtium. Uh, and, and nasturtiums, yeah. yeah. Oh, and there's a flower on the, on the nasturtium. It's beautiful. We use something called bumper crop to okay. grow tomatoes. Uh -huh. I don't know if you're familiar with... So you mean it's kind of a supplement for the plant? Uh, yes, uh, it is. And so two-thirds potting soil, one-third... Uh, uh, Oh, bumper wow. crop and it's got crustaceans and okay. kind of sea oh. salt and all sorts of so stuff. So well, it's like look a, at how tall they are. Oh, yeah. It really works. And uh, right before we enter the backyard, so we see three container. These are salvaged from our uh, brother-in-law and sister-in-law's house when they redid their chimney and their chimney liners. These three that are more or less square, but there's also some circular ones too, which are, mm -hmm. we have about six of them in the, in the garden, and they're, yeah. they're phenomenal for, mm -hmm. uh, they're kind of a combination of sculpture and, and, exactly. and pot, pot in a yeah. sense, right, that. Yeah. So we'll see them when we go further in. Yes, it's really, really special. So it's a repurpose, a found item, and you turn this into uh, a container, and they're living a second life in your garden. Yeah. All those uh, little ducks, they are purpose. Yes. It's for them, so it's, it's like a... Do you want me to demonstrate? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, anyway, so, so the idea is to duck. 
Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You have quite a collection, <laughs> and uh, and I think you switch out different design. So we have these really old lilac. These lilacs are probably oh, uh, they are probably sixty to eighty years old. They're, they okay. uh -huh. they they were in they were. They were large trees when we moved in, and that was 35 years ago. Yeah. And we lost some in, in storms, uh, but we propped these up, and uh, we don't want people to uh -huh. hang, hang on to them when they walk in, but it makes yeah. a nice entrance way. Yeah. I mean, how the lilac is positioned, it just creates a sense of intrigue. It does. So it's not wide open. Some visitors may wonder if, if this is the right entrance, yeah. but once they see all the sculpture, the arts and all the ducks, they know this is the entrance. So yeah. it's kind of a, you bring a, a sense of drama yeah. for the entrance. But before we move on, I see you have something made of uh, bicycle parts. So, yeah. so I know bicycle is another passion of yours. So. Yeah, uh, it is. And this is a gift from a friend for, I think it was my 40th birthday. So this, this, uh -huh. this has been around for a while. Yeah. I'm well past 40 so, now. So you are the founder of Ride for Roswell. Yeah, I founded, I founded the Ride for Roswell in 1995. This is its 28th year this year. Okay. It's, okay. It, it's raised about $75 million for oh, Roswell Oh, that's Park. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. To yeah. support the cancer research. That's right, yeah. It's just such a wonderful idea. Yeah. So people are enjoying the outdoor, doing what they really enjoy doing, and they are raising funds to support a great cause. Right, uh -huh. it's, 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 it's a win, win, win all the way around, Chase. Yeah. So it's, it's really great. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah so that was a good, that was a gift from a friend. And then we have uh, our gargoyle. Gargoyle, and yes. Some <laughs> rock sculpture. Greeting so. all the visitors. Yeah. Yeah. Greeting <laughs> with, yes. a, with a square duck on his head. Yeah. Uh -huh. And here's another bicycle wheel. This was a gift from a cousin of mine. We had her for dinner and she was moving. She was moving out of the uh, her house and had extra dishes she probably wanted to repurpose. And she, they gave them to us and we proudly uh, yeah. display this. It's beautiful. Yeah. And here we have all just different art and you might notice the little kitty planter. Oh yeah. Portends the little kitty in the back. <laughs> We've, this is a really nice place for hot stuff, for ferns. To mention you have the black walnut, which produce jugalong, which can be an issue for many plants. Yes. But hosta is one of the plants that will be very happy under a black walnut. They can tolerate jugalong very well. The, the tasta were fine, but, but that was over there. Tomatoes, we discovered, yeah. rhododendron, azalea, didn't yeah. like it. Well, wow. we learned and changed a lot of plants. Yeah. And this is, um, uh, here, Mitch, you talk about this. So that's just a piece of found art sculpture that we we found at the same place where we found Rusty the dog you saw out front. And it it's uh, flashing from an industrial process. Oh wow! Clever, so cl cleverly put together. So it's well, actually well like a scrap metal. It is. <laughs> yeah. Circles. Yeah. And then the circles. Are, are yeah. Oh, oh, it's the... really beautiful. I can never imagine those are scrap metal, unless you point that out. It... Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a little kitty. Yeah. Wow. So come on in, Jay. This yeah. is, uh, come into the backyard. Uh -huh. Let me give you the mic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is our backyard. It's kind of secluded. Mm -hmm. And um, you see a lot of flowers. It happens oh, to yeah. be... I have to say that uh, I get a whiff of the lily. Mm -hmm. It's just intoxicating. Yeah. Well, we are, that's why they're planted. We're in the beginning of August, and we are lucky to have a very long lily season this year. Yeah. And um, the, I mean, the fragrance is so in intoxicating. It really, it really is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. and, and they're so, and we've already, you know, lost some of the lilies um, be between the heat and the rain, mm -hmm. but they're still... The uh, oriental and the, the beautiful white and pink lilies wow. are still transporting their beautiful scent. Yeah. Uh, Can we walk towards that area and yes. take a closer look, please? Well, here we have, uh, we have Cana yeah. here, and they were a gift from another buffalo gardener. Her father, her name was Siobhan Nian, and her father had a house on uh, Starin and Amherst Street, and when he died, she dug up Cana's and gave them oh, to people okay. and I have been sharing these. I gave some to Jim, Charlie A. I've mm -hmm. been sharing these with lots of people. And this, you may see a couple places. This is called Kiss Me Over the Garden Gate with, with bites of uh -huh. uh, 
Japanese beetle, but it's a it's a sort of an old fashioned amaranth as. And um, it's very dramatic uh, seed head. Right? Yes, uh -huh. and um, that reseeded itself. Oh wow! And this is another kiss me here, yeah. and these are aren't these 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 oh, uh, the fuchsia are so beautiful. Yeah. So you overwintered the fuchsia? Uh, no, okay. we haven't. I might this year. Uh huh. Yeah. And come on over here and look at this water feature. Right over here. This is our, our first outside. Uh, our first outside fountain. We found this also in that uh, place. And these are called um, salvia, it's purple a, and bloom. So it is an annual these salvia. Are, these are all annuals, uh -huh. and the pots are all annuals. The sunflowers, uh, so you the have salvias. The, the lantern and the, the and junia. The, yes. Yeah. And um, the geraniums. Yeah. And we plant these, uh, f um, salvia. These, uh, these salvia here and the black and bloom over here, oh, these are yeah. purple and bloom, uh -huh. because um, hummingbirds love them. And they oh, yeah. come to our window, they come right to our window. Uh -huh. And we've been seeing a lot. Yeah. Very substantial window box. It covers the entire span of the windows. Yeah. But this year, during the Buffalo storm, they'd never done this, but they fell off because they were so uh, laden with snow and they fell uh -huh. off. Yeah. And Mitch had to put them back on. So those are the two of the custom-made potting bench you really enjoy working on, right? Because yes. they are they are the perfect height. Um, They're made from cedar, and we had them bought them at the uh, garden, the art, garden sale. art sale that uh, Gardens Buffalo Niagara does yeah. in the end of June. Yeah. And a carpenter was there, and he made them for us, and we're really happy with them. Yeah. So this is where you keep all the. Herbs, the herbs you and, a, and right. a few other things and they yeah and we overwinter these wonderful so one thing i want to point out is all the little creatures in the garden we have this little white kitten and uh, and right after a turn we have this so this is a lizard right yes a lizard. or maybe a dragon <laughs> oh it could be a dragon <laughs> and a bat yeah Right next that to is the, from Texas. Oh, from Texas, right next to the salvia. The salvia is really striking. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Here's another creature. Here's another oh, yeah. creature here, Jay. Yeah. So the, and the, eating a duck. So the, <laughs> we, we, had, we, had, we had extra ducks. <laughs> you have more than enough for, for the creature. Oh, another little duck hiding in the socket. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they find their way around. So let's take a look one of the most famous attraction on Garden Oak Buffalo. So the sculpture, do you have a name for the, for the sculpture piece? Uh. Yes, the name of the sculpture piece is Haka Tama. Oh, wow. Yeah. And and Mitch uh, uh, made it, Mitch built it. Oh, wow. So yeah. it's 16 bowling balls and seven pins. And I built it in 2007, so it's about 15 or 16 years old. Mm. And everybody asks uh, what the inspiration for building this was, and I tell them that it was because Ellen and I had our first date at a bowling alley. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this is a great story behind the sculpture. Yeah, yeah. and, I, and I, I have a lot of dad jokes that go with it, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I'll so, spare you. Yeah, so this would be another uh, chimney piece. That's a round chimney, uh, that's a round chimney pot. And we have several of them, and they're really perfect for inserting the pots in them. Uh, yeah. We have the elephant ears, yeah. which go in the basement. They're tropical, and they go in the uh -huh. basement. And this way, we can put the pots in, uh -huh. and the chimney pots stay and oh, oh, don't yeah. break all yeah. winter. And yeah, so, so let me show the view very quickly. So you use the chimney pipe as the outer layer. Yes. And you have like an insert which is the nursery container. So you just move the nursery pot out. And, and they go down the basement. Yeah. They go into dormancy mm -hmm. for the winter yeah. along with the cana, the elephant ears, uh -huh. um, uh, so, dahlias. So that is an elephant ear. That's an elephant ear, with coffee cup. With dicondra yes. as the trailing element. So yes. with container, you want to keep things simple, elephant ear and the dicondra. You have this very striking combination yeah and uh, it's very effective over here uh -huh. the uh the chimney pot with elephant ears have um plant called love lives bleeding which 
it's an amaranth and um, the seeds it's self-seeded. Wow. We didn't plant them in there. Yeah. We uh, planted the elephant ears in there last <laughs> summer. Yeah, but I love the combination. It just give you uh, this kind of uh, element of a surprise. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have this very unique, uh, very elongated uh, seed head. And there are a couple more uh -huh. elephant ears uh -huh. in pots and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so you see the elephant ears, they have the large leaf and they also provide a sense of movement. They bring the movement into the garden. We just had a, uh, some breeze, it just moved gracefully, very gently. And because and, they're tropical, they have to be protected in the winter, they can't stay outside. Yes, so elephant ear, you have to... Take inside, take they go inside. down in our basement, they go dormant, mm -hmm. you don't water them, mm -hmm. but they've survived for a long time. Yeah. So let me show the viewer the view from this side. You have, so in the backyard garden, you have this uh, center area, which is a circular shape of a bed. And you have all kinds of perennial planting, but you also have containers. So some of the, how do I say this, not really well behaved plants, you put them in the container, like, like things in the mint family. Yeah, can you show us an example? Yes, okay. come on over here. Well, these are, uh, as you can see, they're milkweed, and they came up, and we were happy for those. But here's mint, mm -hmm. that's, and here's some uh, uh, dahlia, and they go, the mint stays outside, but it goes over near a protected place all winter. I do not want to put mint in my ground. Yeah, and that's a very good practice. Have yeah. it mess up everything, and, yeah. and uh, here's a little oregano. Oh, yeah. There, and that's, see that little chimney pot, that's a little one. Mm -hmm. You have quite a collection of chimney uh, pipe for containers. We do. Oh, look at the lily. So I want so you to see all the beautiful lilies. We yeah. So they move with the wing along with other very delicate uh, perennial. And, uh, you and this just, is a fennel. Uh -huh. And that's, you know, also it's so... It's a host plant yeah. for, the, for the swallowtail, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, the fragrance is just so beautiful. Yeah. And over here we've got uh, we've got flocks, uh -huh. um, and here are our gorgeous, gorgeous lilies. Oh, look at the color! These are um, stargazers. Stargazer, wow! And they're just really, really uh -huh. beautiful. Yeah. Right behind the stargazer, <laughs> we see something quite quite interesting. Another creature. It's an elephant. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's, a, it's an upside down watering pail with a couple uh -huh. saucers and the eyes are hose mm -hmm. attachments for uh, yeah. plugging in a hose. So, And then I've got a couple of uh, tusks made out of uh, uh -huh. Uh, storage storage pieces. So yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I can tell that. But it has a personality, I think, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so this, I mean, just sit on top of the fence at the corner, and uh, you might miss it. But uh, if you pay attention, it just bring you a smile. Yeah. Look, looking in, looking in. <laughs> and come look at the water fountain. Yeah. So this fountain, this fountain, we put in and. 2005 and the story behind it is the pot came from a, a dealer who is no longer in business who was out on transit road and we drilled it and plumbed it and there's a reservoir underneath and it's got that effect of like an infinity pool where it just oh, yeah. spills over yeah. and uh, it's quiet it's 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 got it makes enough noise to be audible without being uh, too sharp or annoying and um, we drain it every year mm -hmm. at the end of the season and put a cap over it so it stays outside all the time. Yeah. And the neighborhood cat named Jack. Jack looks at, looks from it. You've seen those videos? Yes. Those yeah. Oh, yeah. And the, he loves to drink from this particular fountain. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah, I made, I made videos in slow motion. Yeah. So you mentioned this is quiet, but if we pay attention and get closer, we can still get the very gentle flowing sound of the flowing water. It just... Uh, so you have different elements of sound in different level of loudness. Mm -hmm. So for a moment that is really quiet and you have the opportunity to really get close, you get more enjoyment out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. 
it's just like different type of uh, stimulation to all your senses. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have different type of sound, the ruffle from the leaf and uh, different type of sound from different fountains. And you also have the fragrance from the lily and from all the ming and herb. So it's just a very enjoyable garden. Mm -hmm. Um, here is a mature over Jay over here mm -hmm. is a mature love lies bleeding and this self seeded it's an amaranth mm -hmm. and you can see mm -hmm. it but it's got it's people grow these for grain oh yes uh -huh. and you can get uh, these they aren't quite ripe yet but they self seeded but we we really like these and they're mm -hmm. it's they're, really beautiful yeah so again, we are visiting uh, Alan and Misha's garden. So this exceptional garden is featured on the open gardens as well as uh, Garden Walk Buffalo. So let's take another look at the really famous attraction. It's just it's such, a, such a sense of whimsical. Yeah, you wouldn't expect us before entering. And uh, once you enter, it gives you a sense of destination. It just draws you into the garden and you want to take a walk then during the walk you will notice all the fragrance all the water feature as well as all the little creatures so there are so many elements of surprise in this garden well thank you alan and uh, thank you mitch thank for you sharing your garden thank with you us. jay